fourth grade ELA text set six illustration study craft uh, the essential question how does an illustrator make decisions to interest readers our goal for today is to notice and understand some elements of poetry when they appear in nonfiction <clears throat> Let me start by reading the first page of Giant Squid. Down, down in the depths of the sunless sea, deep, deep in the cold, cold, dark, creatures strange and fearsome lurk. What are you, all, all, what are you thinking already about this book? If we look at the cover, we can see that the title is Giant Squid. It is written by Candace Fleming and illustrated by Eric Rohan. We can also see that the book won an award. This award is given to authors and illustrators of outstanding informational books. So down, down in the dust of the sunless sea, deep, deep in the cold, cold, dark, creatures strange and fearsome lurk. With writhing arms and ghostly, lidless eyes, they glide, some large as buses, some weighing a ton, so big yet rarely seen, instead they are merely glimpsed, now and then from the prow of a ship, from a rocky seashore, seashore. Through the lens of an underwater camera, who are these giants of the dark seas? How do they hunt? How do they eat? How do they breed? It is a mystery. After all, how can, we, how can you know about an animal hidden from view? You must rely on clues, as scientists do, clues left behind by the creatures themselves, a tentacle, an eye, Pieces found around the world, found over centuries by whalers and sea sailors and people walking the beach. You examine each piece, questioning and guessing, wondering at the weirdness of this baffling beast. Beast, we call... Giant Squid. So this book contains several pages of print before we get to the title page. What does the author do on these pages? Here are its tentacles, two, curling and twisting and 30 feet long, waiting for a passing fish, another squid, anything swimming by. The tentacles seize their prey, they surround their thrashing meal, they latch, latch on with powerful sucker-studded clubs. Row after row of suckers, suckers ringing, ringed with saw-like teeth that rip into skin and hold on tight. Eight coiling arms join in, pushing the prey to its feet. Um, okay, so I noticed that the print looks like poetry and many of the words appeal to readers' senses. How the description of the beak and tongue help you picture what is happening. The beak, bone hard and parrot like, it sits in the center of this eye, eight lithering arms protruding from the creature's mouth, rotating from side to side, ripping apart prey. And what lies behind the beak? A dark hole, the mouth, and inside the mouth, a terrifying tongue like ribbon of muscle covered with sharp, tiny blades that slice, grind, File the food into a pasty sludge, easy for giant squid to digest. Yuck. In the murk, an eye, round, unblinking, some as big as soccer balls, the biggest eyes on the planet. Why? So it can spy pinpoints of lights in its pitch black world, glints, flickers, Set off by tiny creatures, jellyfish and krill, disturbed by a diving sperm whale. Their flashes create a shimmering outline, faint, so faint. 
So as the book continues, we see more and more of the giant squid. Why do you think the author and illustrator reveal this information body part? Body part by body parts. But not too, not too faint for the big-eyed squid. The outline is a warning. Time to flee, sucking water into its body and squirting it out. The creature jets away. Danger passed along, alone once more in the murky depth. The creature floats, writhing and falling at will. The squid is pinkish purple now, but any second it could change color. Maybe pale yellow, maybe silvery gray. Maybe red with brown stripes or orange with black dots. Which colors, which patterns? It's another mystery. And why do they change? Maybe to impress a mate. Where, did the, where does the female squid lay her eggs? How long does it take them to hatch? More unanswered questions, still more mystery. Yet one day, a baby giant squid hatches from its egg, teensy tiny, just two inches long in the ocean. It is dangerous to be, to be bite-sized. Watch out for that barracuda, quick. Ink. You see the squid right there? So let's open these folded pages and see what's behind them. Talk about this. Why do you think the illustrator created, created these folded pages? Here, here we see most but not all of the squid. I read earlier that its eyes, that its eyes may be as big as a soccer ball. What does that make you think about the oval size of a giant squid? It's gone. There it goes. So what are you thinking about this creature of the deep? Okay, and then here are some... Um, these are the... This is the label diagram. Uh, it shows the beak, the arms, tentacles, the eyes, the funnel, which is right here, the mantle, which is right here, and then the fins. I have the fins right over here. Okay.